The Capetians, also known in modern terms as the House of Capet, are a Frankish noble family of origin, which, as successors to the Merovingians and the Carolingians, is considered the third French ruling family, particularly by French historiography. As kings of the Franks and, from the 13th century, as kings of France, the Capetians played an outstanding role in the formation of the French nation that emerged from the West Frankish part of the empire and in the founding of the French central state. The progenitor and namesake of the family is King Hugo Capet, who was a member of the Frankish noble family of the Robert Ines, which was documented as early as the 7th century. In a broader sense, all agnatic descendants of Hugo Capet are members of this family. As a direct continuation of the Robert Ines, the Capetians are today the oldest ruling family of the European high nobility still in existence in the direct male line, represented by the houses of Bourbon, Orleans, and Braganza. In the course of its more than thousand-year history, it has provided a large number of monarchs of both extinct and still existing monarchies, in addition to the kings of France. Currently reigning monarchs of Cape Tion descent are King Philip VI of Spain and Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg. The meaning of the word caput is unclear today. It is possible that it comes from the Latin caput, which means head or head broken and could thus figuratively mean leader or chief. However, it is certain that it is not a surname in the classic sense, but an honorific nickname. The name Capet became established in colloquial use in France from the 13th century at the latest as a dynasty name for the royal family, which, however, referred to itself as the Maison de France, House of France. In the first work on official French historiography that began in the 13th century, The Primate of Saint Denis, a dynastic periodization of the history of the Franks into the three royal families, Merovingians, Carolingians, and Capetians was undertaken for the first time. The background to the ongoing battles was a feudal dispute over the possessions and the role of the English kings as Dukes of Aquitaine in the Kingdom of France and the subsequent dispute over the succession to the throne in France between the English king Edward III from the House of Plantagenet. The House of Anjou Plantagenet was a ruling dynasty of French origin that provided the kings of England from 1154 to 1399 in the direct line and until 1485 in the collateral lines of Lancaster and York. And on the other side, the French king Philippe IV from the House of Valois. He was the first king from the House of Valois, a side branch of the Cape Tion dynasty. The Hundred Years' War between France and England began during his reign. Especially at the beginning of the Hundred Years' War, field battles were won with armored cavalry. The English had their famous longbowmen, who created a deadly wall of arrows. This wall of arrows represented a significant barrier for the French horsemen, which they first had to overcome. The arrows had a range and penetrating power that was strong enough to penetrate armor. The armored nobility responded to this with heavier and stronger armor. But the other side also had a variety of improvements at its disposal, from the crossbow to the development of the blunderbuss. The French cavalry was more heavily armored, but the English had more knights. At the beginning, the English pushed the French back and conquered half of France, but then Joan of Arc came along and the French took new courage. The French went on the offensive and gradually reconquered the lost territories of England. The Hundred Years' War contributed significantly to the final formation of a separate national consciousness among both the French and the English, as well as to the final division of France and England into two separate states. In addition, many technical innovations in warfare were introduced, for example heavy artillery in the Battle of Castillon, 1453 the first European field battle to be decided by the use of gunpowder. Durch Wolken schien der Mond aufs Meer und auf den weißen Strand am Sund erschlagen lagen ringsumher die Ritter von der Tafel rund am Dünenhangel 
Wund zum Tod lag König Artus ihre Zier und bei ihm kniet in seiner Not der tapfre Schenk Herr Betifere. Er sprach, o Herr, wie seht ihr Blas? Gewiss die Wunde schmerzt euch sehr. Der König sprach, es ist nicht das. Die Wunde brennt doch anderes mehr. Wie frat ich viel um meinen Leib, wenn keinen Fleck mein Schild gewann. Doch mich betrug das schönste Weib, doch mich verriet der beste Mann. Sie da hoch, o Lancelot, ich hegt euch wie die Put der Schwan an meiner Brust. Verzeih euch Gott, was ihr an eurem Herrn getan. Weder ihr bracht die Treu an mir, erlosch das Sternbild unseres Ruhms. Die Ehe ist tot und über ihr stürzt ein die Welt des Rittertums. Bild wuchernd um den Trümmer graus, schießt auf Gewaltat, Lug und List. Ich fühl es, meine Zeit ist aus und bettle nicht und Leben frisst. So fahr denn wohl, du treuer Mann, ha! Siehst du dort das Schiff der Fei? Begrenzt mit Lidien schwebt's heran und Hosen glühen, als wär es Mai. Im Winde klingt ein süßes Wort und lullt mich ein wie Hafenton. An Bord, an Bord, nun geht es fort in stille Land nach Avalon. The English were now finally forced onto the defensive and withdrew from France in 1453. Only Calais remained as their last base on the continent. The Hundred Years' War between France and England ended. France now became expansive again. Charles VIII invaded Italy in 1494, seriously disrupting the balance of power that had existed there until then. Almost 30 years later, Emperor Charles V also intervened in Italy, a decades-long struggle between the houses of Valois and Habsburg for supremacy in Europe began. And the moral of the story? 